up his fuel stripping. And that is your fuel strip 365. Here we're gonna set some things aside and we're gonna work just on the slide. Okay, so I got a little screwdriver here to remove the slide cap. You have to push this over and in. Kind of tricky on camera here. And then you can remove this back piece. To remove the striker, we're gonna push down on the striker safety here and pull the striker assembly out. Be very careful with this spring it's under tension so you don't lose it okay disassembling the striker is pretty straightforward you're going to push down on this striker spring there we go remove these caps it can be a little tricky The spring will come off, the sleeve, and the sleeve spring. And while we're here, I'm just going to give it a little rinse. Right. And just so we don't have a bunch of little parts throughout this whole project, we're going to reassemble the striker assembly now. That's the sleeve spring, the sleeve, go over the top of that, the striker spring. You're gonna to wanna to push it all the way down to this point here, if my camera focuses, so that cap will fit back on. Okay guys, that was a little bit harder than I expected. These used to come in a two piece and now it's a single piece, made it a little bit harder to get everything lined up and fitting, but that's a striker reassembled. So there are two more screws here to remove this slide plate and a pin here that you can push all the way through to take the extractor out. I'm not going to do those things because I don't want to mess up my extractors unnecessarily. So yeah, I'm going to get this back together. And we will move on to the lower part of the fire. So this next part is pretty tricky. You have your striker safety and your striker safety spring. Place it on here. See the hole there? Line it up. While putting pressure down on that spring, take your striker assembly. to hold everything in place like so. And it should lock in right here. Let's see if I can focus it. Little lit ledge okay. lock. For the reassembly, we have to push this tab over and this down and then slide the plate back up there. So let's do that now. I didn't have the video running, but basically that little tab had to go over and in so you can slide the slide plate back on top of it. Now it's assembled again. Now we're going to put the barrel back in and the recoil spring and the slide has been disassembled and reassembled. Now let's move on to the lower, or the frame with the fire control unit. With the lower here, we're going to knock out this rear pin. The 
The pin can go either way. Then you lift up the back and the fire control unit pops right out and you have your grip module here. The mag release does come out, but there's no reason I would ever take it out except to switch it and I wouldn't even take it out to clean it for a detail strip. So I'm not going to now either. We're gonna move on to the fire control. So I took it out, this safety bar here, um, tends to fall out pretty easily. You can rotate this all the way forward. This is your takedown lever. That'll come out pretty easily. And the next thing we're gonna take out so our trigger, trigger bar, trigger spring. We're gonna take off this trigger spring. So you can use a pick or a little screwdriver. Be careful. You just want to get it off of this ledge there. There's your trigger spring. We'll set that over here. And here's your trigger bar. That was held in place by that trigger spring. Coming up to the shoe. And when we move our trigger bar out of the way, we can remove the disconnector, which then on this side, I forgot the name of this part, but it's holding in our sear disconnector right above it but this will pull right through. When we remove this piece here, it's also holding in place our safety lever here. So if we you see that piece there, that fits in right here so from here we're going to remove this trigger trigger bar you need the smallest punch you have to go right through here it only goes one direction and you can see this it's barely barely gonna work you just get enough real estate on this side See if I have some tools up here. They're a little bit overkill. So I have to get something to pinch this. And pull that out. So from there, we're gonna pull this up and out. Pull the trigger, and then the trigger bar will come right out. You can see the shoe just floating around there. The trigger shoe also just comes right out which means the only thing we have left in here is the sear assembly and the, the sear and the spring. I made a mistake. I did not remove the slide release yet. It just lifts right out. And it's captured by this little spring in here. As you can see. So again, the last part is if we were to remove this sear pin, the sear and the sear spring would all pop out. I'm not um, comfortable that I'll be able to get that under tension back in there without the proper tools. So this is as far as my detail strip is going to go. And now we're gonna start the reassembly process. All right, to start off the installation, we're gonna have our trigger. Yep, that's our trigger bar and our trigger pin. So from here, we're gonna put this trigger back in the trigger safety bar, make sure that's locked in there. And then make sure you take this pin and you put it back in because if you forget that step, you're gonna have to re take everything apart off the side again because it'll be blocked. All right, we're gonna get this slide release back captured under here. 
Uh, it's a little bit frustrating, so I will be back in a second. As you can see, it's under that spring tension. So now we got to reinstall the takedown lever, the safety bar, and the safety here. So we're going to start by rotating this to about the 7 o'clock position. Oh, trigger bar is going to where it's going to be. You have this here, then right underneath here, this piece, this circular head will index under there and then come across. If we can get it all lined up just right, you see everything lined up perfectly. And now we can't push this pin in to lock it in place without the safety disconnector, which goes in right here. So while we hold pressure there, let's get our trigger bar all the way. It goes in this orientation, this little front piece goes towards the barrel. So, Set this in there. Oh, sorry, took it off camera. Try to get it all aligned. Let's see here. There we go. And then we can push the punch back through. lever in place you can see pops up there this pin went all the way through to hold that in place and it also locks in this safety takedown bar so now we are going to reinstall the disconnect Pretty easy to reinstall, just slides right up in here. That's it. We'll put the trigger bar back in front of it there. The trigger bar spring, if you remember, it fits right through this piece here and catches on that little lip there. And the other end is going to go into this little piece here. So let's do that now. So we push it through there. It'd be nice if we had some better tools, but we don't have those. And we are just going to push this forward and try to get it to lock into that little hole there. That was a bit of a struggle, but as you can see, it is back connected here and indexed there. When we pull the trigger now, you'll see the movement. And then this is the completed FCU, fire control unit. You have your grip module here. You have to make sure it seats on the forward end first and the back end slides in. Take this retaining pin. Just pushes right in. There is a little retaining clip on the FCU there, so it cannot just walk its way out or anything like that. All right. Take your slide. Reinstall it.
and I was reassembled.